Hiya! Let's play with a nuclear reactor. New game, let's go. And it throws us directly into the control room. Let's clear all of these uh, pound, not pound signs, these uh, not question marks, exclamation marks. I've already read all this. Plus, I'm fairly knowledgeable in a very amateur sort of way of the operation of nuclear reactors. So I don't really need this basic information. And this is our control room. Now this control room, I think, is supposed to look more like the Chernobyl control room. It doesn't look like a typical control room that you would have in, like, North America. Although I've only actually been in one. Let's skip the controls for now. Here's a little radiation suit. We don't need it. This is a future uh, Space Age robot that's supposed to help us run the reactor. Let's ignore him. But let's go look at the core. Pretty. Whoops. Uh, that'll happen a lot. For some reason, the game suddenly slows down for a few ticks and your head swings wildly around. I don't know why it does that. This is not typical of a reactor. This is looks more like a experimental reactor, and in the game they actually call it experimental reactor. You wouldn't necessarily have a reactor sitting in a pool like this, especially not an industrial one. If you look at the reactors at MIT? I think MIT has the reactor. Uh, I can't name any more. They will also have reactors in pools that uh, you can do experiments with, uh, but they're very low power reactors. I think they only generate a few tens of kilowatts of thermal energy. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, there's only one reactor that I'm really obsessed about, and that's, uh, that's the Bruce. We can't, we can't go into the pool to inspect the reactor because we'll drown. We can lower the water level, but I'm not going to do that because who cares? Here's our little accoutrement. We have piping for three loops, but only one loop is present here. So we got our pump, we got our steam generator, and this is the pressurant. Um, I think that this is a loop I can't access. I'll show you on the chart in a minute, but some of this equipment sort of doesn't do what I think it's supposed to do. Not that I know very much about it. This is the decon chamber, which is which also doesn't look anything like a real decon chamber. A real decon chamber will have like um, uh, an actual physical barrier and then it'll have like a little thing that you stand in, sort of like this, but much smaller. And you, you put your hands on the wall and you put your feet on these little uh, thingies and it goes mute. And then it tells you if you have uh, it, how contaminated you are, because you will be a little bit contaminated, not very much. And then you go and you shower and you put these paper clothes in a wastebasket. Well, I don't think they were paper. They were like, they were pretty cheap though. Like something you throw out three or four times a day. And this is the um, turbine hall, which actually sort of does look like a, a real turbine hall. You will have generators and turbines like this, all connected to the to the system that will crank. I think this is supposed to be the generator down here, and this is supposed to be the turbine, or that's the generator, and this is the turbine. I'm not exactly sure. That, to me, looks like a turbine. That generator looks very small, and that looks like I've fallen off. So again, some of this equipment doesn't look the way I expect it to. Not that I have a lot of things to compare them to, because Again, I haven't been in a lot of turbine uh, halls. I've been in like three, and uh, one of them was for a coal generator. And they were mostly for tours, too. And then we go up here. We'll clear all these little pound marks again. Exclamation marks. I don't know why I'm calling them pound marks. Probably has something to do with uh, Mario. Here is the backup diesel generator. Again, it looks like no other diesel generator that I've ever seen. Um, I'm sure some of them would be blocky like this, but most of them look like, you know, modern backup generators, you know, with a square thing and, a, and the engine part on top, and then they've got the built-in tank, but not like that. Our very simplified switchboard, a bunch of emergency backup batteries. Here's the battery chamber. These are very small for backup batteries. Then some accoutrement. Oh! There was another room I forgot to show you. We're gonna run back to the reactor room. We're gonna go past the pumps. 
Then we're going to go to this room. And this is the dry storage chamber. And this also doesn't make very much sense. So this is the control rod, which looks, or not a control rod, sorry, the fuel rod, which looks nothing like a real fuel rod. Hopefully I'm throwing a picture of a real fuel up on the screen right now. These are nothing like it. And then these would be the dry casks. And this is not super uh, not typical. The dry casks can look like anything. You can put them in the in a, uh, a sealed vault like this. Um, in most places, they're just uh, these concrete and other mixture of crap cylinders that can sit anywhere. They can sit outside. They can sit in a room. Usually they sit in a room somewhere. The only concern you have with it is to keep dust control because dust, when it flakes off, it is very minorly radioactive. What this is missing is a pool, is a cooling pool. There's no cooling pool. And that pool down there, down there, is doesn't count as a cooling pool. That's just a pool for the reactor. Now this reactor also acts a little strange. This door, I don't know what this door is. I haven't been able to open it. It says I don't have sufficient permission to get in there. There's also an exit I can't get through either. The outside might be modeled. There are pictures of them on the uh, on the game page. Okay, let's look at the diagram. This diagram is also confusing because I am not used to diagrams looking like this. I'm gonna put on a better diagram. Okay, so here is a colored in diagram of the thing that we just saw, the, the, the diagram board that we just saw with all the, the different loops colored in. So this loop is kind of strange because this is supposed to be the drain fill loop, but this looks more like an offline or passive cooler loop to me. So when your core is offline, it's still generating a little bit of heat and you need to take that away. And you wouldn't use the main uh, service lines to uh, suppress the temperature. So you would have this secondary line, but that's not what it is in the game. This is some uh, emergency system and I don't know how to use it. It seems to engage automatically. This is the pressurizer. Don't know why the thing is split, but what it does is it keeps up the pressure in this line, and you do that by basically uh, vaporizing part of the system. So part of it will be water, so the bottom part will be water, and the top part will be steam or water vapor, and the steam will push down on the pressure vessel and then push into the pipe uh, line and like pump up the pi pipeline. This uses a heater, but I've also seen them use like injected air and shit like that. This is the main uh, pump. So it just circulates around. These valves uh, isolate the pump for service and other things. There are no bypasses or other kinds of um, secondary lines in this thing. So usually you would have these, all of these pumps cross-connected in some way that you could switch between the pumps so that your, uh, if there's damage in this loop here, you can switch to this loop, even if this pump is damaged, but there's none in that in this game. These are the steam lines that we saw. Those were silver. Uh, when we're down there, we didn't really look at them because it doesn't matter. The, the, the biggest part of the game is not being in the reactor. It's being in the control room. And that's all I really care about. And it can it uh, goes through the steam generator, and then that steam generator goes off to the turbine. And then here's the recirculation pumps, and these are the um, heat exchangers. And this is the cooling tower. Now, according to the game, there's a nearby river, and you wouldn't normally be using a, a cooling tower if you had a body of water nearby, because you can just pump a tertiary loop through the river to keep the uh, to keep the reactor cool. Now, this is not a really good, this is, this is not the kind of schematic I'm used to either. I will show you what the kind of schematic that I'm used to, and I think is a much better one that makes much more sense. Here it is. Doesn't this look lovely? Okay, so this is the uh, cooling circuit main core loop that I can't touch, that there's no functionality with that looks more like, that seems to act more like an emergency loop. Uh, this generally, again, would be used to cool the core if it's shut down or, if, again, for emergency use. And then this is the main pressure line. And that's what the main pressure line would uh, act like. And it makes the pressurizer make a, 
make a whole lot more sense. So you have the uh, the the vent which pushes um, more fluid into the system or takes fluid out. This tank would normally be like half full or empty or whatever because uh, the pressurizer will still be contaminated. So you don't want to flush that water out somewhere. You want to keep it. Uh, this would be to dump water into the pressurizer and to cool it down. And then this would be your, your pressure output. These are the two isolating lines. These are the pump isolators. This is the, um, this is the pump that pumps it in the loop. And then you have your heat exchanger. So this side of the core is completely separate from this side. And this side is completely separate from this side. Okay. So in the steam generator, steam would be generated and then pushed through the turbine to the condenser. And then the heat exchanger would exchange coolness from over here with the heatness from over here and circulate it back and dump it back in. Now, these are the rivers that I was telling you about. So you have this big river that's over here. Normally, what you would do is you would, this part of the loop would just be over here and you'd have a tertiary line sucking in water from outside, going through an exchanger and then discharging. This is how far removed you are from the, um, uh, from the radioactivity. So the radioactivity should be isolated in here. This will not be directly contaminated, but the water will pick up um, radioactive energization in it. It'll, um, if it's deuterium, heavy water, I think it has a lower radioactivity than um, light water, or I could be getting those backwards. I can't super remember. But then it goes through the exchanger. So the exchanger would have to leak for this uh, loop to become contaminated. And if this loop was contaminated, that would be fucking awful because then you would have contaminated steam coming through here. And uh, turbines, steam turbines, always leak a little. Always. I've, I've never heard of a steam turbine that doesn't leak a tiny bit. It's always leaking out a little bit of steam, a lot of its temperature. Um, usually these things are, are, uh, they try to, uh, to maintain as much thermal, um, insulation as possible in these things, because that would make it more efficient. And then this would be the condenser loop. And if you ever seen the Simpsons, you see those big towers. That's what that is. That tower is nothing but a pool of water just sitting there waiting to evaporate or not waiting to evaporate, but actually evaporating and exchanging temperature with the air. Let's get back to the control room. Have I bored you senseless yet? So we don't need to set any of the valves. All the valves are already set and we don't need to set them up. Let's go inspect. Oops, let's turn on all of these stations first. So we need, actually, let's go look at our, at our fuel status. Okay, so the fuel status in our generator is good. So let's just Keep going. All right, we should do a test. Let's do a test. So we will arm our batteries. Okay, our batteries are in use. And now we will shut down the generator. Okay, we're on battery power, so our batteries are working. Let's reactivate our generator. You can hear it starting up in the background. Okay, our generator is back online. We've got... Come on. Come on. Ah, it's got to spin up. There we go. Oh, come on. <sighs> You know what? I'm sick of you. I'm switching to automatic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so sooner or later, our generator will equalize. It'll, it'll come back to normal. There we go. There we go. Now our generator's back online. So let's turn on all the stations. We'll need the core station. 
This actually, th these three stations here don't actually look like any station I've ever seen in any picture or virtual tour of a reactor that I've ever seen. Um, usually the fueling station, this, this will be like a monitor that'll tell you about the fuel and things like that. You wouldn't actually have like an insert button or anything. That's another weird thing that we'll get to. We'll turn the pressure valve on. We'll turn our core monitoring system on. Our control rods on. Now I'm just going to turn everything on because it doesn't really matter. All the systems functions whether or not the controls are on. And I'm not sure having these specific stations with controls like this is actually realistic or not. Okay, so our condenser is not full. But we will deal with that in a second. Our steam generator is all on lower level and there is water sitting on the bottom. Our main coolant system, the pressurizer is a little high. Our core vessel is, our core thing is um, full. Moderation level is high. Uh, the water is moderating it, so I'm assuming it's heavy water, because uh, light water is not as good as a moderator. You would you would typically use um, graphite as the moderator if you weren't using heavy water. And this is the inlet um, flow rate. Oh, it's at zero right now because everything shuts down. And this is the pool, and the pool looks like it's fine. And this is the reserve pump that I was talking about, and there's no way to control it down here, so I have no idea. Now we're going to move to the, uh, the, the generator, and the generator is all at idle, that's fine, and we're not connected to the grid, and that's fine too. Uh, there's no synchro here, there should be like a synchro here. This is our control rods. Our core monitoring station. This is like, I guess, a situational readout that just shows us like the internal supply and things like that. It'll tell us available power and shit. Uh, these are monitoring stations. Again, the pressurizer. And we will turn the pressurizer on because we would like to get the pressure in the vessel up. So as we're circulating water, it's not going to uh, vaporize. And here's our fuel rod. And this is the first really weird eccentricity. The reactor is unloaded and you can't actually load the reactor until the reactor is on, which is fucking weird. Fuel rods would be inserted way before we get to this point, like probably a month before we get to this point. The only reactors that don't work like that are reactors like the Bruce, which are vertical channels, uh, the channels that go that way, and you would put little, you would put like fuel pellets in instead of fuel rods. Well, they're not really fuel pellets. They are fuel rods, but in comparison to what uh, rods in other reactors look like, they are much shorter and they are much, uh, they look a little solider, if that's a word. And you, you could put them in while the reactor is on and you'd only be putting one segment at a time, um, but it, it's a much more complex operation than just a button. It's like you have these two great big and a great big actuators or whatever come down and they attach to either side of the tube and then the um, the the coolant loop gets redirected through those things then it opens up the uh, the tube it takes out um, these these slugs these empty slugs that go on the end of the caps and they push in more fuel and they do shit like that it's it's fucking interesting my father actually worked on the um, upgrade process of at the Bruce to upgrade the reactor and one of the things that he did was work it was working on the electrical supply of these mass massive crane movie things okay where is our so the pressure is going up let's start the pump now we shouldn't really start the pump but this is a game okay let's Pump online. Oh 
Okay, we got a white light. And then we will bring it up to one quarter the reactor power. Poland has started to circulate. Thank you. Now everything takes time to ramp up, ramp down. And as well, while the pump is flowing, so if the pump was on high power and it suddenly shut down, it would take um, a while to get back down to a zero flow rate. Okay, 20% is good enough. So now we have coolant flowing through the primary loop. And right now we're only like um, room temperature in the reactor, so we're fine with all of that. Oh, and our pressurizer has gone back up, so we're going to turn it to low power and turn it off before the valve pops. Come on, turn it off faster. There we go. We were very, really at the edge of the relief valve coming off, but there we go. Now, what we can do, um, do I want to start the other loops? Ah, it doesn't matter. We don't need to start the other loops. So let's turn the reactor on to 1%. And we'll monitor the pressurizer. Normally you would have someone standing here no, uh, monitoring the pressurizer. You wouldn't be running back and forth. So we're at 99% uh, insertion. Uh, on the ordered and 99% insertion on the position. And the reactor is now on. And now for some strange reason, we insert the thing into the core. And that's fucking weird. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Now this is like an, an error readout because we don't actually have any kind of fission happening at the, at the moment. So we're, we're warming the core up, and as you warm the core up, um, the dynamics of the fuel bundle changes, so it actually doesn't become more uh, reactive at this point. So you would have like a neutron generator. I think I'm, exp don't, don't take my word for this, but you have a neutron generator and you would be exposing it to um, outside neutrons to get uh, reactivity up. But in this example, what we're using is the thermal dynamics of the fuel bundle and the uh, reaction chamber to change the reactivity of the, uh, of the bundle. So as the heat comes up, at this point it shouldn't be generating more neutrons, but we are creating a situation where it's more likely for neutrons to bump into actual atoms. The deuterium would actually, would I think the deuterium, if it's deuterium, I think the, the, the deuterium would inhibit the reaction, so. Uh, I think my moderator, yeah, okay, the uh, pressurizer's gone down. I'll put that back up. As long as we keep bouncing within this green range, we'll be fine. Now I'm bored, let's speed up the process. You would never do this in real life. It takes like a month to get a reactor up to power. It takes several months to get reactors up to power. And we're kind of going into an uncontrollable range. Now we should have a neutron burst at some point. There we go, a critical mass. Now the flash would happen, the but the reactor has reached critical mass, and its but status the, the, has changed to reactive. The the uh, the water bouncing around doesn't seem very um, realistic to me. Let's turn on all of our loops because we're doing this quickly. Oops! Did I not turn this on? I did not turn this on. And normally you wouldn't turn this on raw either. You would have like some kind of. Um, you would have to close off both sides of the valve, to both valves, and you would have like a bypass in there and all kinds of crap. But the game does most of that automatically for us. We're almost at 100 degrees. Where is the pressurizer? Pressurizer is still good. Okay, let's uh, let's slow this down because I am not comfortable getting getting it up this quickly. Okay. 
Okay, we got our rods to 98%. Now this steam generator should automatically start generating steam. And I am going to bring us up to full power on the loop. Okay. Okay, the loop is at full power. We'll keep the steam generator at 50%. Is it still at 50%? Oh, it's still coming up. And we have a, a yellow light on our recirculation pump. We already knew that. Now let's get back to the pressurizer, which is starting to get out of spec, so we'll turn it back off. Okay, back to the reactor. And now that we have our coolant flowing through quicker, it's retarding some of our heat buildup. Okay. Okay, we got some bouncing occurring. I think we just popped a valve. No, we didn't. Okay, I don't know why there's some bouncing in those displays, but you can see that the inlet pressure here is bouncing back and forth. Usually that means there is um, something going on with the, uh, with the pressure valves. But it looks like we're staying above 100 liters per minute. So I don't know why this, why this Oh, that's the inlet temperature. Why is the inlet temperature freaking out so much? I think we're probably um, in a in a thermal um, window that the game doesn't want to doesn't want to play well with. And I thought I saw that level needle twitch. Let's turn the heater back on. Okay. Okay, so we should be generating some steam now. And we are, we're at 200 watts. Now normally, you would not connect this to the grid at this point, because you're not at an operating power, but this is a video game. And also connecting to the grid would be a little more uh, involved than that, because you have to synchronize with the uh, frequency of the grid. But now, we can stop our react stop our generator. Take a look at our pressurizer. Okay, we're still good on the pressurizer. And now we will arm it to automatic. So if we have a turbine trip, which I don't think it happens in this game, I don't think you have a turbine trip in the game. Um, we will switch to backup power right away. We're at two almost two hundred degrees. We can turn the heater off. Oh, fucking thing. Yeah, see, that looks like a pop. But it goes right back to, to the temperature that it was. Usually if you have a pop, you will either suddenly gain temperature or suddenly lose temperature, which we did for a microsecond. Like, that doesn't make any sense. We shouldn't be going back to, like, um, 170... Um, bar. That should, we should, it's, it's weird. I don't know what it's doing. Probably because I'm driving the, the pumps and everything too hard. Okay, let's bring the steam turbine up to power. And we can hear the turbine moving. Like a little piece of, like a little bit of wind. And we're in the red zone for everything here, but that doesn't matter. And we'll bring our condenser temperature down. Or our uh, condenser loop down. I don't realize it yet, 
but I am already in a three mile island situation and I'm about to make it worse. There we go. And we'll probably start injecting some water in there. But we'll want to keep a, an eye on it. Our pressurizer is still acting weird. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, let's bring our power level up again. Just so we get to full power quicker. I would probably be fired for be operating the reactor in this way. I would well, I wouldn't just be fired. I would be like yanked out of the control room. Yeah, the flow pump is like skitzing out. It shouldn't be. Like that's indicative of of uh, of the of the pressurizer vessel popping, but it shouldn't. If it is, if it was, it wouldn't be returning to the operational temperature as quickly. It should be a smooth process. So that might be a little bit of a glitch in the game in the simulation. It, it doesn't like being driven this hard. It's probably, there's probably some sort of calculation error where the, uh, the, the water coming into the inlet is like below freezing when it shouldn't be. A relief tank is empty, so it doesn't matter. Okay, what's reactor power at? We can hear the turbine spinning up. All of our controls are set, so we don't really need to do much. Let's uh, keep it at optimal. See, it just popped again. It shouldn't be doing that. And then it went right back to operating temperature, which it's it that doesn't make any sense. Okay, I think we're independent now. We haven't I heard an overpressurizing sound. Oh shit. Oh no, wrong button, wrong button, wrong button, wrong button, wrong button, wrong button. Oh, I forgot the condenser was on. No, no, that's the evaporator. Stop popping around like that. Okay, there we go. Uh, no, we want the evaporator one, evaporator three. Okay, yeah, we want condenser open. And I may have fucked up. Steam generator is open a little bit, so let's close it. Now it's closed. Okay. We're we've we're stalling our turbine. Yep, we fucking installed the turbine. We've stalled the turbine. I'm not doing this on purpose. I'm actually fucking up. Come on, valve open. fucking valve. Uh, what's the power of the reactor at? We have that set way too high. Yes, we do. So let's bring that back down to 098. 
because we're now at operating temperature in the reactor. We don't want the reactor to go um, super critical while we're fucking with other systems. Why are you not opening condenser? Okay, no, don't shut the, the generator off yet. Okay, whatever, shut the generator off. Be a dick. I think the bleed valve is actually open. It's just we're getting a false reading right now. I'm going to leave the actuator on. Just so that I know what's, what the fuck's going on. Okay, we need more energy and the pressurizer because we are really an, an, in an unstable configuration here. Okay, we need a little more power. Okay, let's look at the stop. My head suddenly moves and then I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, we're leaking out here. Our turbines are spinning. Pressurizer is still acting weird. I'm gonna over pressurize the pressurizer for a second. Just a tiny bit. We're gonna stay in the operating range. Okay, we're still losing power, so let's bring this up a few points. If I can get my person to click, and he stops delaying to doing things while he's deciding to do stuff. Now for the condenser, I think I'm going to stay in the yellow zone for now. Because the more mass we have in there, the harder we can drive the turbines. And driving the turbines is something that is hard to do in this game. Okay, we're a little overpressurized. Stay here. Okay. Internal supply is secure again. Okay. Core temperature is bobbing around optimal, but we're still okay. Control rods are stable. We are a little bit in the yellow zone for the um, rod control system. Turbine generator is weak, if you see over here. We're just in the yellow zone. Uh, the last time I played, I couldn't get this up, but we're, we are generating 10,000 kilowatts, so that's good. Now I'm going to close the valve, because it takes time to close the valve. There we go. Hopefully that valve is not broken. Okay, the, the uh, level's going up, and then it has to do with the thermal um, dynamics of the game, of the, uh, of the loop. So I think we're actually closing. Okay, we're closing. There we go. Now we'll shut the actuator off. There we go. Let's look at the pressurizer again. Pressurizer is okay. And the reactor is at the bottom of our optimization. That green line is our compliance bar, so we're just wait for our compliance. Do we have something else that we need on the checklist here? 
Oh yeah, turn the operator, the uh, the assistant on. Welcome. My name is Al, and I am the operations assistant for the reactor. The plant is ready to go into operation. If you need Already my help, in operation. please let me know. No, I don't need your help. Go fuck off. Here. I want you to uh, analyze the plant. Tell me if anything's broken. Okay, we're stable at 352. Should be bobbing between 352 and 351. So I'm going to give us a little too much energy. And we're going to operate the plant a little hot. Because I would like it to be between 360 and 370. So we can get more steam out of the system. We can actually turn the condenser loop down even more because we're using like a fraction of its capabilities. Now I don't need to look at the pressurizer anymore because I can see what the pressure... God damn it game. I can see what the pressurizer is doing based on the inlet and the outlet flow rates. If it's... Um, around 120 it's good if it gets a lo below 100 liters per minute then we know that, the, that there's something wrong with the pressure even 114 is a little low so i'm going to look at it uh the pressure is a tiny bit low why did you just pop you shouldn't have popped probably because i'm driving the pump too hard turn the heater on a bit yeah, it's skizzed out. And it seems to happen like every time, like my head whacks to the side like that. It also could be because the temperature is below optimal. Okay, let's push the temperature higher. Let's drive it hard. By putting it down 0.3%. <laughs> okay, let's get into the upper range here, because we are driving the pumps pretty hard. I might throttle back on the pumps a little. Okay. Let's actually do that. Let's throttle back on the pump. Decrease our power output. I'm pretty sure most reactors operating temperature is 600 degrees. Could be wrong about that, but I think a pressurized reactor core would be 600 degrees. Come on. Give me a 61. Something just armed. The heater's off. Coolant rods are fine. Turbine generator is fine. Coolant system is fine. Pressurizer is a little high. Popped again because it's high over here. Oh, you! That's what I'm hearing! Steam generator is steaming. And the condenser is a little high. Oh, god damn it.
Okay, well, our pressurizer would be perfect if uh, a valve wasn't popping right now, but popping because we're pushing and pushing the system too hard. Okay, you creepy little bastard. Hi, creepy little bastard. Uh, no, 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 I didn't tell you to turn on. Stay there. Okay, I'm going to bleed off the condenser a little bit. Our pressures are high across the board. I don't really want to bring the coolant system down. Okay, actually shouldn't be popping because we're only at the very high end of normal. We're generating exactly 10,000 watts, kilowatts. Okay, reactor's too high. But we're in a normal range, so we can... Whoops, no, no, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. We're not going to bring the power up. We're going to bring the power down. Okay, this is like super stable now. No, our flow is still skitzing out a bit. Okay. Our internal is fine. Pressurizer is a little low, but who the fuck cares? Fuel temperature's fine. We have no radioactivity. Our valves are in the proper position. Let's bleed off the condenser a little bit. And we'll leave the actuator on, because who the fuck cares? Once we get to about 110, Okay, now we'll close the valve. It would probably also be fired for running in the uh, control room. Let's look at the reactor again. Reactor is not in a stable configuration yet. Let's go up two more. I don't want it above 370. I want it to be like 365, ideally. I want it to be a little warm, because, I don't know, I just want it to be a little warm. Pressurizer. Pressurizer is a little cold for some reason. Probably actually did pop. It did. Now while that's on, we can't really trust the temperature of the reactor. Because we're adding energy in. Okay, let's go look at our condenser. And we're about at the at the at the level we'd like. 
On our steam generator, we're in the bottom of the green. We're not going to push that any higher because our pressure is uh, is is high. We're at the top of our of our of our pressure green band, and our temperature is a little high as well. And I just my head just snapped side. I had a seizure or something. Our coolant system is at ninety percent, generating ten thirty. And if you look at our rotation speed, our rotation speed is still down, way down. And I haven't really been able to get it up very high, even after playing with it for hours. Yeah, I don't care. Okay, let's go look at the pressurizer. Pressurizer is back in specification. Okay. Now we'll keep an eye on our reactor temperature. I think 373 is good. We can. I think we can leave it at 373, 374. Our circulation is still a little, a little low. Pressurizer looks okay. You know what? I'm going to bring the control rods down a bit. I think that's a design flaw. And I and I know that's a design flaw that actually exists, where the in um, you're looking at uh, how much has been inserted instead of saying like it is one percent out, it'll say it's one percent in, and I think that is backwards from where the, the from how the human mind works. Okay, our <laughs> bounce low again. The pressurizer is almost exactly on spec. Uh, let's turn on the camera. Ah, God damn it. Another seizure. There we go. Around 10 megawatts. Everything looks okay. Okay, let's go inspect the hall. Not that we really need to in this game because we won't actually see like little drips and drops. It's sort of, you have to like, you know, look at it kind of thing. And I, for some reason, the universe threw me to the side again and again. Ah, oh, damn it. Here is our little outside circulation. We can actually probably turn that down even more. We have a lot of cooling capacity in that tower. Cooling capacity in that tower. So, activated, energized, ordered speed has been reached. Oil pressure is fine. Our pump is nicely powered. What is that orange thing on the side? Maybe it's just a manufacturing mark. Oil pressure is good. Got no red lights. 
our electrical generator is generating. This is our condenser. Our, no, this is the... I don't know what this is. Yeah, there's a condenser. That's fucking weird. Okay, whatever. Oh, ah, I was looking at it wrong. No leaking, even though we can't probably can't see leaking in the game. Our spin speed is pretty low. But I can't push more fluid through. I just I don't have the capability right now. This is the turbine, and this is very weird because turbine usually doesn't look like this. Turbine would actually look kind of like that. And we are over generating in our uh, turbine. All right, that looks good. Let's go inspect the core. Once I stop being disoriented by being kicked around by the game. Oh, that's the blast shield. We don't need to put that down. Here's our spare parts and the exit, which we can't get through. No exit! Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I don't have sufficient permission to get the fuck out of here. Here's some respirators that you can put on. I'm not going to put them on. Hi, reactor. How are you doing? Now, if this was a experimental reactor, this probably wouldn't be very dangerous because the depth of the pool would be calculated to uh, your nominal power range, so it would absorb the radiation coming out. In an industrial reactor, uh, we'd be fried. Uh, we're not going to go up and look at anything close. I think this is the, uh, uh, the, the crane up there. It doesn't move, which is sad. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I'm having tons of fun doing this. Except for the throwing your face around. Okay, what is our reactor? Whoa! Okay, our reactor power went way too high. While we were meandering around, our reactor went way out of range. But our pressurizer is low for some fucking reason. Okay. Everybody seems to be okay. The reactor is way out of range. But we're going to bring that down. We're not actually out of range. We're not in a danger range. We're just uh, above our thermal, our optimum thermal configuration. Again, I want to keep it at 370. You would never be alone in the, re in the reactor room, I think, control room either. Uh, why did our operation... Okay, because the reactor is not behaving very well. Come on. Come on, okay. We're on a thermal runaway. We will almost completely withdraw. We're going to force the reactor back down. Okay. Pressurizer is back up to power. And let's let's shove this reactor back in line. Wrestle it like the great beast it is. Again, I'm not screwing up on purpose here. I'm actually screwing up because I'm not really paying attention very much. Plus, I don't really know what I'm doing. I just think I do. Okay, you're going down too quickly. Okay. 
Okay, we don't want to bottom it out. We want it to start stabilizing very soon. Stabilize now. Okay. The core's got to warm up now. Because we're, we're, this temperature reading is indirect. It would be like the water around the core. There wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any kind of thermal sensor in the bundle. Okay, I don't know if that was, what the hell that was. The sound changed suddenly. Okay, we're getting down too, too low. Oh, I know what that sound is. That sound is in real life. That's not in the game. That's the sound of my computer complaining that my, my temperature is too high. And I have to turn up the coolant on my computer. Okay, there we go. We seem to be stable. And I'm going to turn up the coolant on my computer. And while I walked away, our thermal profile is crashing. Okay, pressurizer is going down again. Oh, come on. Let me push the button. That's more important than the control rods. Especially because the control rods are in a configurable state right now. Or in a, like a non-runaway state. Yeah, the valve, it looks like the valve is popping, but it shouldn't be popping. I might throttle our main loop back to 85%. Actually, let's go back to 75%. We won't be able to generate as much electricity. But maybe we can stop the pump from skitzing out. And our thermal range is getting back up there. Or not. Come on. Just a little bit more. We get a good little core. Uh, can I see a nine? You are pissing me off, Core. Pressurizer is perfect now, though. Okay, it's going to take like a half hour to get this, the um, the thermal profile back into, back in line. And I might just leave it because it's dancing around 355, so that's not 
too much lower than our optimum. And I am driving this reactor way too hard. Pressurizer is still pissing me off. That yeah, still looks good though. Okay, let's throttle back on the condenser a bit. Not that much. Okay, everybody's in a nice range. Everybody seems to be happy. Except for that fucking pressurizer. Okay, the actor is still falling a little too quickly. We're in a little bit of a thermal stall now. And I don't want to push it too hard. Should actually throttle it back to 50%, but whatever. I'm having too much fun. I want to make my I want to make some problems for myself so I have stuff to fix. Adventuring is adventurous without you. Okay. You are continuing to piss me off. So where we were before when we went out of control a bit. And our pressurizer is back into spec. It popped again. thing is, is, I don't hear any valves going off. I think you're supposed to be able to hear a valve go off. Yeah, so I recorded myself doing this too. I, um, I built a once-through water-cooled system for my computer. And I have to go through the footage because I kind of ruined it when I recorded it. So I'm going to have to do some VO work on it and I don't want to and go through the footage, and I don't want to do that either, because I fucking hate editing. Okay, our pump seems to be super stable now. Yeah, I was driving it too hard. And our reactor is responding nicely. I had this huge coil in the in the uh, the loop too, which is not really being used for what I wanted to use it for. Uh, if for my once through cooler for my computer, I haven't put the video card on the cooler, but that's because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to the video card. I have never made a uh, water or coolant system for a video card. And the video card is a little more complex than the motherboard and the CPU. Because the motherboard is mostly passive. Most of the stuff on the motherboard is passive. And the CPU is just kind of this square in the center that you just strap something onto. And then you can do whatever the fuck you want with it. I've also contaminated my water block. So my water block has a speck of pipe dope in it. So I either have got to shut the computer down, take the water block out of the system... And then, like, take a pipe cleaner or something and try to clean it out. Or, I'm, I don't think I could take the acrylic apart. I think it's been sealed shut. Or I'd buy a new one. I have another one somewhere, and I'd like to test the thermal profile of that one. But, of that water block. But, uh, I don't know where it is. It's weird, because that's the one that wasn't, like, I, I misplaced one of the water blocks. 
And the water block I'm using now is the one that I misplaced. And the one that I was going to use is now missing. It's somewhere in this fucking place. Okay, I think we're getting on the stable side. Let's pull power a little bit. I can hear our turbine spinning quite nicely. We're still close to 10 megawatts, so that's not that's not terrible. Let's look at this system here. Our condenser temperature is fine. Our steam level is our water our water in the steam uh, thing is fine. Steam generator is fine. Temperature is okay. Pressure is okay. Pressurizer is still acting like a dick. I'm not pulling power more than 75%. Fuck you on that. Now the fuel bundle when it's hot, will change shape. Not enough for a person to see it, but uh, when it's hot, it expands. Oh, wrong way. So the hotter that it'll get, the more that it'll, it'll spoil itself. Not poison itself, but it'll spoil itself a bit. Okay, I think we're stable now. Yeah, I think we're stable. Ah, fuck. I get like super disoriented when it does that. When it like, it's almost like if I smack the mouse. I smacked the mouse and it didn't even do it. <laughs> now my mouse is like underneath something. There we go. Okay, there we go. Isn't this fun? Look at that! I don't want to pull the condenser any more than it is. Because our profile and everything is quite nice, and I don't want to, I don't want to throw anything out of balance. Okay, awesome sauce. Oh, our reactor is getting a little too hot. There we go. Look at that. Our pumps are perfectly stable. So, I was driving the pump too hard. It was stalling itself out. We have a, a nice flow rate of 150. Our temperature is between uh, 360 and 370. And it uh, we should bounce around now, I think, around the temperature range that we see right now. Everybody else is in good condition. We can see up here on the service compliance that we were producing quite a bit more a couple hours ago, game time a couple hours ago, uh, and we're overproducing because our service limit right now is like 30% or something, and we're producing close to 40%.
we don't get paid for our output like a, like any other game where real life would be, but uh, we get paid for um, reaching goals, and the goals will start coming up in a couple hours or something like that. Uh, the last simulation I ran was six or seven hours long, real time hours long, but I just was running in the background while I was watching TV. And I am having tons of fun. Like this might seem like super boring to most people. I'm sure everybody have stopped watching by now, but this sort of industrial garbage I love. I love games where, like, where you're controlling something. Like I would seriously enter um, a lobby we were, where we're just controlling something. Like you were just operating some great big factory. And I actually like working in like those kind of situations. I don't like working in the really stupid things. Like I was, uh, uh, I was working for the uh, CA banknote, Canadian banknote, and we were inspecting bills and stamps and stuff like that. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm allowed talking about that. I signed an NDA, but I think as long as I'm not too specific, that'll be fine. And I'm not even sure how long the NDA lasted for, but that was fucking boring. You're just looking at it all, just looking at it at, at these things over and over and over again. And it just, like, if you ever, like, I took economics, and that kind of ruined my image of how monetary system works. But if you ever want to super ruin it, work at a place that makes money. Do you know what kept the building warm in the winter? Literally burning money. Like there would be stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of bills that didn't pass inspection that would be thrown in the furnace and burned. Like money has no value. Actual, okay, we're at 70, we're at 370, so we're a little high again. Let's suppress it a little bit more. Security wasn't as high as you would think it would be because quite literally, the money stops having meaning after a while. I sat beside a, uh, a pallet of 20s, I don't know what it was, but it was it was basically several million dollars in a stack. And it never occurred to me once to take any of it. It never occurred to anybody in the building to ever take it because uh, for one, you wouldn't be able to sneak enough out, enough out to be worth any kind of wild whatsoever. So you couldn't sneak a whole pallet out. There was That was just not happening. Like you'd have to work in the docks and it'd have to be like this really great operation going through but if you were if you were working on the floor there is no way you're getting more than a sheet out and it just loses its meaning it just becomes paper it just becomes something that's sitting there that's utterly meaningless and then later on you cut it up into strips and throw it into a furnace like i, I don't know if it, i might cross other people's minds and they're f trying to figure out how to get money out but i never thought about it until like much later on when i was like contemplating the job, uh, but that was no fun. That was no fun at all. There was no like operating machinery. That was for the machinists to do. And I'm not, I have no skill set to be a machinist. I have no training to be a machinist either. Machinist is the wrong word too. I was an inspector. I've done every kind of job you can think of. I was a business person. I've driven trucks. I was an apprentice plumber, apprentice electrician. Okay, our reactor is still a little bit too hot. I've worked call centers. I've worked at McDonald's. I've worked at the banknote. I've also done, I've uh, worked at computer repair places. I've ran retail stores. I've done research, actually research into the nuclear industry, all kinds of stuff. And I'm never more happier when I'm playing with a big goddamn thing. Especially if it's got lots of buttons and dials and stuff. All I want is to be back in my playpen with a busy box. And this is just one big busy box.